G'day guys, Chris here from Vogus Prospect. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're an old hat like this one, welcome back to season one, episode six. On this episode, I've got something really special for you. I'm camping overnight at a location that I found some amazing gold on yesterday whilst I was out prospecting. And I wanna show you how to efficiently mine an area once you've prospected it. We're gonna take the gold monster and utilize it to do a couple of very interesting things to help you locate pockets of gold. And I'm gonna show you the most efficient ways to work the dirt. And the last thing I wanted to show you, which is actually going to be the first thing I show you, is my camp. Because I see a lot of prospectors go out there and when they first start going out and doing proper mining sessions and going away for weekends away uh, to do our hobby, often they come underprepared. So I want to show you some of the gear and equipment that I take so you can have a really enjoyable time. These three items are my top three picks for camping gadgets that will make your life just that little bit easier. We have a Goal Zero solar panel we have a water purifier, and we have a stove top. The Goal Zero solar panel is an amazing investment. It cost me $150, and this thing allows me to charge my mobile phones, my GPS, my detectors, um, and even my laptop. It's an absolute must I found from a perspective of getting power. Now you could buy a generator, you could buy uh, battery banks, and all sorts of other things, but this just allows you to charge stuff anywhere you go as long as there's sun. It folds out, it's ultra light, it comes with a 12 volt adapter, and in here there's a little battery bank that you can recharge rechargeable batteries, which means that you can recharge things like batteries for your detector, or you can just use this battery bank to charge your mobile phone or your laptop or whatever it might be, uh, whilst the solar panel is charging something else. It's very, very versatile, and it's an easy way to get electricity out in the bush, especially on a budget. The next thing's a water purifier. Now, I've used a lot of different methods of purifying water from streams and creeks, and I really implore you to do it because you don't know what else might be happening upstream in any water source, no matter how remote you are. All it will take is one dead animal or an aerial bait 1080 to be dropped into that water stream to make it become toxic and poisonous to your health. One of these will filter about a thousand liters of water, and all it does is screw onto a normal drink bottle. So if you've got a, a bottle of water or a Coke bottle, you could screw screw this onto the top of it, fill it up with creek water, squeeze it out, and it comes out with 99.99% of all bacteria and toxins and whatnot purified out for you. These things cost somewhere in around $30, and you will get a lot of use out of one of these. The last one's a cooktop. Now, there's a whole heap of different methods of this, and it's gonna be very personal to what you do. Obviously, if you're in a family situation, you're gonna need a proper big cooktop stove. But it, again, coming from an ultralight perspective, where I tell people a lot, you know, good gold can be quite remote, it can be quite hard to get to, and you're gonna need a lot of work to get there. Shedding weight is important. These run off little gas bottles, the gas bottles last forever, and they will boil a liter of water in around a minute. They're extremely powerful, and they only cost, again, about $25, $30. You can go all the way up to spending about $250 on one of these bad boys, but they're well worth the investment. You can do anything you need with fire with this, especially if you're in, say, a, a situation where it might be a total fire ban or whatever, you can control one of these very easily, very safely, um, and they don't weigh overly much, so you can get out there and get remote. Right, enough talking about camping, let's talk about gold. The plan is simple, we're gonna take these buckets and we're gonna walk them down the creek, which is over there, where it's all nice and blurry. Prospecting is about looking for a deposit of gold. Mining is about working that deposit of gold. Yesterday I prospected and I found fantastic gold. I found close to a gram in five pans. And now that I know where the gold is sitting, all I have to do is go and collect as much of that dirt as possible. Now you could set up a high banker, you could set up a river sluice and just try and dig straight into it. But it's fraught with issues where you'll get slowed down with feeding those sluices. So it's better to stockpile your pay first and then do a big run at the end. What we're gonna do is go downstream, bust open bedrock, and collect these pockets of gravel that are in these cracks that only appear during summer. And then, once we've got all the buckets full, we're gonna feed the crock and get that gold.
We're on the creek and this is the only weapon I am going to need today. Let me explain. This is the bedrock we have in this area. Now, even though it looks extremely solid, it's really not. What happens is in summertime, this stuff fractures. You can see some of the cracks that are down here already. And when it fractures, in the summer heat here in Australia, it hits 40 plus degrees where we are and, and those cracks really open up. They actually expand quite a lot, even in the creek, especially because the water level drops. And when those things expand, the very next flood that comes along, a lot of gravel gets pushed up and into them. So basically we've got this very large open crevice, lots of gravel falls into them during the, the summertime and the first floods that come through. And then they close up in winter when the temperatures drop to sort of negative three, negative six overnight sometimes and that traps these gravels in the bedrock. So what you have to do is find a nice jagged bit of bedrock, such as that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and find any kind of groove you can get your pry bar into and just apply pressure. And what happens is these things pop and release a lot of this gravel. And that's where I found the amazing gold yesterday. Grizzly, good supervising mate, we've been absolutely inundated with progress. <laughs> I've smashed up a whole heap of bedrock along here. This is all that bedrock, all those big rocks here, we've just absolutely got into it with the nice long big jimmy bar. I'm almost three buckets down and we're still getting beautiful amounts of clay. This is all the clay that I've rescued from my sieve that's going to go on the campfire tonight. Michael's still working on his side of it. Um, he's managed to move a really big rock and I've even seen him put some down the sluice, but I got to get him to tell me when he's doing that next so I can show you what a dream map looks like running. Three buckets. Okay. So, a couple of things, this is why we do test pans. From what I found yesterday, there's sort of like a, a tanny colored clay that's full of ironstone and that's where the gold seems to be sitting. That pan was mostly filled with the gray clay uh, and I got about three nano dots you're not gonna be able to see on camera. So, we're not gonna fill up the pans um, and the buckets and stuff with that worthless stuff. We're gonna go hunting for the yellow stuff. I've got four buckets, roughly four buckets worth of dirt out of this inside bend here. And I'm at a stage now where it, it's really, I'd have to work my guts off just to, to get very little dirt off the bottom. And most of it is in that really sticky gray clay that we did a test pan of and doesn't have much gold in it. So what we're gonna do is run them down the dream mat. I haven't used the dream mat before. It should be very, very exciting. So without further ado, let's get dream matting. impressions of the dream mat are absolutely fantastic it is a pleasure to watch just seeing the gold get caught in the first couple of cells beautiful beautiful bit of equipment like I said at the start of this video this is about mining not prospecting now prospecting I would be looking for the deposit and yesterday that's exactly what I did I found the deposit of gold hiding in amongst the fractured bedrock 
So I've spent my time instead collecting as much of that dirt as I can by breaking apart the bedrock, screening it down and putting it into buckets. And what this has done is compartmentalize the process of actually mining an area. So yesterday after identifying it, I knew it would take a fair amount of work to get in there and sluice all this dirt. And I have basically put it into two different sections. The first section was collection, and the second section is processing. This does a couple of things to benefit you. If you were trying to sluice all that dirt at the same time as collecting it, you would actually end up in a situation where you're trying to do too many things at once to be efficient. You're trying to make sure your sluice is running correctly. You're trying to make sure that you've got enough dirt to feed it. You're trying to make sure you don't accidentally bump your sluice. You're trying to make sure that you can open up enough ground without accidentally putting your sluice or your tailings pile on top of the gold deposit. So by doing this, it means you can process the dirt in the correct area so you don't cover your workable area up. You also make sure that you're not putting dirt that isn't worth processing down your sluice you can keep an eye on it by test panning periodically and so on and so forth and that's what we've got here today i've now got 40 liters of screen dirt that i know that area had a lot of gold yesterday and i can concentrate now on making sure that my sluice is set up correctly and that it is running absolutely perfectly and i'm starting to see a little bit of gold in the mat so we know it's going all good oh, look at the gold Look at the gold! Look at it! <laughs> and you're left with almost nothing! All right, 40 litre run of screen dirt. Most of it was crevice dirt. Some of it was clay that was pretty worthless. And all in all, I think that's pretty good for four buckets. I got grizzly or frisbee. We've set Michael up with a hell of a crevice and I'm going to show you guys the easiest gold you could possibly get. When most people think about working an area, they look for low pressure points and they look for cracks and crevices and all sorts of stuff that could indicate gold. But something that's often overlooked are little pockets on bedrock. Now I'm not talking about crevices. See a crevice would be something like this here. You can see a crack running in underneath this rock. We know that if we pop the top off that, there'd probably be some gravel under there, probably trapping some gold as well. When you're standing on smooth bedrock like I've got under my feet, and the water velocity is so fast that it absolutely rips all the gravel off the top of this bedrock and nothing accumulates here, most people think that there's no gold there. But what you'll often see is little pockets of gravel. And these little pockets of gravel are usually sitting in a very shallow depression in that bedrock. And if there are rocks there, I'll almost guarantee you that there's gold there. So using a yabby pump to sucker those things up can be really, really worth your while. This is an exaggerated version of what I was talking about. The bedrock I'm currently standing on has several very jagged, sharp ripples, and these will be acting like a natural river sluice and catching gold. But it gives you a good concept uh, to identify what I'm talking about by shallow depression. So we're going to go from the most extreme, and then I'll find you one of these shallow depressions. Here's the extreme version. See how these rocks are nice and sharp. So basically all this gravel that's lying in between these riffles is going to hold gold. It's working exactly like a sluice, except it's not man-made. It's naturally made. And that means I could work all of this gravel, all that gravel, all the way back to here. The benefit of doing that is that there's only this much gravel sitting on top of the bedrock. So you only have to work maybe one or two pans and it's very easy to collect. You don't actually have to try too hard. So this is the extreme version. Let's pan some of these out and see what gold we get. Now 
you'll have to excuse my yabby pump because it's absolutely stuffed. The baffles in this thing are gone. But we swept all the dirt out of these cracks and crevices just to here. Yabby pumped as much as I could off the bottom. And this is what we've got in our pan. So, you know, very relatively small area and not even probably half a pan of dirt. Let's pan it off. Got lots of ironstone in the pan. Have a look at this. Tons of ironstone. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that. Little ring of colour coming out in the corner. Shotgun pellet. Oh. Oh, look at him. So just utilizing a yabby pump and those little natural depressions, we pulled that gold out and half a pan. I didn't have to dig, I didn't have to do any work. And this is what it's about, working smarter, not harder. So even though this little area here is working like a natural sluice ripper, like I keep saying, um, and it will be catching all that very fine gold and whatnot, what I've actually discovered is in the very fast areas of the creek where you've got nothing but plain bedrock and just those little depressions with a tiny amount of gravel in it, the only thing that stops in those is, that's heavy enough are larger bits of gold. So you're more likely to find a picker in a flat section of bedrock with a little divot than you are in this little sluice section. Now this sluice section is going to be collecting all your flower gold for you and yeah it could collect pickers and whatnot but those little depressions in the bedrock are where the nuggets hide. Now the great thing about this method is you can do it without a metal detector. All you have to do is go and look for the gravels hiding on those bedrock surfaces. However if you've got a metal detector like this one you can start cherry picking. That's the shotgun pellet I just dug up. Gold Monster is on, it's set to Auto Plus, uh, and we've got maximum sensitivity with all the depth on. Very, very sensitive machine, watch this. So we know that there's a shotgun pellet there, obviously, and the detector's giving us a very nice signal. Now, if we come back down here, and we scan the bedrock, we've got another faint signal hovering just in there which is just another little ripple. So we're definitely going to dig that out. And this one I'm talking about, it allows you to cherry pick. It doesn't mean that you're going to find nuggets with it, but it will definitely tell you if there's something metallic and something heavy hiding underneath your feet. This is the second pan I've taken out of this riffle. The first one was just a shovel off the top and then I yabby pumped it clean. I want to put you underwater and just run some rock over the top of this lip to see if you can't see how it works like a sluice riffle. I've done about five half pans from this area and this bottom is nowhere near clean because my yabby pump is absolutely stuffed like I said before. But this is the color we got for those five half pans. And it makes you think, I barely did any work there with a dodgy yabby pump and I still managed to pull a spec count close to 70 bits of gold. And this is what you're after, easy gold. If you want easy gold, this is what you do. Come out, work clean bedrock sections. Don't crevice, just take the gravel that's sitting on top of it. It's the end of day one. I finally got Josh out on the creek. <laughs> it's been forever, but he's full of holes. We can't push him too hard. Yeah, only mid-sized boulders he can move. <laughs> <laughs> this is the gold that I got for about eight hours worth of work. Most of that was panning, a little bit of sluicing, which you saw, uh, the 35 litres of, of dirt that I screened off today. So we're going to go to sleep. Well, soon after I eat dinner and sit down and nurse my wounds. <laughs> and then we're going to get up in the morning and do some detecting and we're going to get crevicing. The first place I want to finish off this morning is where I left you last night where I showed you how a set of nice jagged sharp bedrock riffles can work just like riffles in a sluice. This is this section here. We pulled out beautiful gold from there and all over this area. This has been pretty decently worked. I want to work my way back. You can see some outcropping of bedrock just runs across here and joins up with that nice big triangle there. And when we look at the big picture, we've got beautiful gravels tailing down here and I reckon there will be some more gold underneath it all.
Yabby pumping. Yabby pumping is the way to go. Because look at that. Second pan of the day. We got gold. This is the result from two pans. Uh, one pan was yabby pumping off one little corner in that triangle and the other pan was taking the overburden off with the shovel. Most of that gold came out on the yabby pump pan. So like I was saying before, yabby pump's the way to go when you're doing this sort of mining. Got the yabby pump in there on the bottom and bam, even more gold. Every pan is magic like this. It's, it's awesome. It's very rare you find a spot that's like this, not because these spots don't exist, but because they usually get broken up by other prospectors thinking that they're crevice crevices. You know, they've got gravel really wedged in them. Yeah, they might have a little bit of gold wedged in a crack down the bottom, but he's going to keep collecting gold every day of the week if you leave him alone. I've actually got more dirt here than I first bargained for, so I'm going to go and get the sluice to clean it up because I've, I've done more pans than I first anticipated. This is the tail end of the inside bend, and I've got a riffle that goes from here all the way across. You see that dark line? That's bedrock. Comes all the way across right on the tail end of that inside bend. There's a lot of dirt just there, so I'm going to set the little crock up, and then we're going to pump as much of that dirt through as we can. After seeing like probably 30 specks of gold after one pan, after dredging off the bottom with my yabby pump, I had to pull it out because I got really excited. Let's find out what we got for six pans worth of dirt. Respectable little take. Most of this gold came out of the very last, um, the very last pan that I put through because everything else was stuff on top. There is more dirt in it, so I'm going to keep working it, but have a look. Where there was no sluice run, I have now created a sluice run with the help of Linden's Dam I showed you in the last episode. I'm just using a portion of it to block the water flow and channel it so I actually get some height and drop to the water. There was only about an inch of water running across that when I started. How awesome is that? All right, shovel time out of here. started as simply just cleaning out some beautiful little depressions in the bedrock has turned into a full-blown sluice run it's a nice surprise but i can't find the bottom um and i'm absolutely knackered from yesterday i've probably pushed through 30 shovels worth of this overburden stuff and i'm still not on the bedrock so it's a deep hole it's a really deep hole it's about as deep as my gumboot currently what we're going to do is just do one more shovel and then we're going to clean it out and see what gold we got in that overburden well, I did a lot more work than I did, like I said, about 30 shovels uh, compared to one pan that I tipped down and saw 30 bits. Uh, and I got a lot of ultra fine flood gold, which is what you really expect in the overbird. There's going to be different pay layers. Those pay layers are going to contain different sorts of gold depending on what happened to move it. Uh, and I'm not on the bottom yet. So if I'm getting this sort of gold in the top, then getting to the bottom of that hole will be really important. But that is a job for another day. Have a look at this. This is the best bit. I mean, look at it. Here we have the day's total. So basically these are all the bullets that I panned and sluiced out of the creek. Uh, some of them I even detected out with the Gold Monster 1000. And then we've got the gold. I'll put a coin in there for scale. Hang on a second. Much better. That makes a whole lot more sense. So that is an Australian 10 cent coin. Uh, and that's all we got. There are some chunky bits. There's a little specimen in there somewhere. Um, but yeah, we've got like pickers. Listen to the picker sound. Ooh. 
<laughs> so we've got pickers, we've got lots and lots and lots of fine flood gold up the top there as well. All in all, I call that a successful weekend. We'll wait for it to dry and we'll weigh it. A little bit of a pro tip for everyone. If you put your gold in a small pan, when you take your photos, it looks like there's a lot more. All right, I'm having to do a lot of improvising here because of varying camping conditions, but we've got this teared off to this little jar. So we're just going to tip it all into the jar first and then put it back on the scale. Yeah, that's about all of it. Oh, oh, oh bro, 1.53 grams. 1.5 grams of gold. Oh, that's awesome. That is, that is a good day and a half's worth of just mucking around. For the most part, all that gold pretty much came out of cracks and crevices. Well, there you have it, guys. I spent probably about eight hours of my time actually working those cracks and crevices. I had a blast out here with Michael. I caught up with Josh last night who came out and gave me a visit and all oh, for a total of one and a half grams worth of that beautiful Northeast alluvial gold. Now for the uninitiated, that's about 75 bucks worth of gold, give or take in Australian dollars. It would be a little bit less in US dollars. Um, and that is, that's a great day out crevicing. You know, I've walked away from days sluicing and high banking and all sorts of stuff with less gold than this. You know, this first season is all about mateship and I didn't get to put a lot of Josh on camera. He only got his one seat. I didn't even get to work his spot because I had so much else to do in this creek. But that's what it's about. I mean, you know, I got to share a campfire with Josh last night, which was really, really cool. Uh, I got to catch up with Michael most of yesterday as well. And I've been trying to have a different person on every single time that I come out prospecting in season one. Although it is rather difficult to match up all our crazy schedules. So it doesn't always work out like that. And that leads me neatly to something very important. I wanted to say a massive thank you for sticking with my channel, going through this tumultuous, tumultuous, is that even a word? Uh, the turmoil of season one. Season one is a pilot episode. It's about figuring out what I have to film, what I have to change in my editing, and a few other things besides, and there are gonna be some speed bumps along the way. We're almost at the end of season one, and I've got some fantastic ideas leading into season two, and I can't wait to share them with you. But before then, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you for sharing them, sending all your comments, which I do read all of them. I'm just not able to reply to all of them. And massive thank you to everyone who's come out on camera. I know it's very, very daunting the first time someone comes out with me on camera because I've got that GoPro right up in their business and they all handle it like absolute champions. So I wanted to say thank you. I've massively enjoyed making season one and all the videos prior to this and I can't wait to get to the end of this season so I can share some of the ideas I've got for season two. All right, guys, that leads me to the end of episode six and season one. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to check out the rest of my videos because some of them might just blow your skirt up and get you interested out to go and get some of your very own alluvial gold. I'm going to take Grizzly home. I'm going to probably get some fast takeaway food, sit down and relax. Peace. See you Friday.